Liza Marcus is a Washington-based writer and the author of Blood and Belief, the PKK and the Kurdish Fight for Independence. She joins us now from Washington. I want to start off with, with a very basic question. The Kurds are mentioned so often these days in, in news coverage, but I think most people have no real idea who they are. Just a brief in introduction, the, the origin of the Kurdish people, please. Well, the Kurds have been, have been in the region of this, uh, this part of the Middle East, which is Iraq, Turkey, Iran, and Syria, for centuries. And um, they've, always, they've, they've always been oppressed, basically, since the modern states came into being in that part of the world. The Kurds have had their national and ethnic rights uh, denied to them. And right now, you have about 25 million Kurds living in that region, uh, divided in, in, among Turkey, uh, Iran, Syria, and Iraq primarily. And in all cases, they've been fighting on and off for uh, political and ethnic-based rights. Right. Now, am I right in saying that they're, they're Muslim, but they're not actually ethnically Arab? So they're not ethnically Arab. They are Muslim, uh, different strains of Islam. Um, you have uh, Alawis, you have uh, Sunnis. Um, it's, you know, they're, they're, you've, had, you've had Jews who have lived in Kurdistan who don't count themselves as Kurds as such, but it's been a very multi-ethnic area mm. um, for centuries. And, um, you know, Kurds always have had a very open approach and open attitude uh, towards um, religious practices, towards uh, living with other people, and um, they really, they don't identify themselves as Arabs, and they're not Arabs. Right. Was, was Saladin a Kurd? Saladin was a Kurd, actually, hmm. but uh, the Kurds are quite proud of him, but they don't see him necessarily as a Kurdish nationalist. Right. I think, um, you know, Kurdish nationalism really took off at the turn of the century um, uh, when, when, when modern nation states started to be created in that part of the world. And, um, you know, what's really important to remember is that, that Kurds have wanted Kurdistan for a long time. And now with what's happened in Iraq, the Iraqi Kurds for the first time are the closest of any Kurdish group in that region to gaining independence. And this is a big moment for Kurds throughout that region. Mm. So when the Ottoman Empire declines and, and decays and various groups are, are given their own country, that the Kurds are denied. So they're developed in, in, in a different way. They're seen by many commentators today as this bulwark of if not the West, of some, of, of some Western values, or, or at least in opposition to fundamentalism. Now, is that an authentic analysis, or is that just too optimistic? You mean to see the Kurds as an alternate to fundamentalism yeah, in and the an region? Yeah, and an opposition um, to, a, a formed opposition to that fundamentalism. You know, there's no question that the Kurds in Syria have been fighting against ISIS. They're no friend of the Islamist jihadists. The Kurds in Turkey have embraced uh, a democratic approach, gay rights, you know, everything you can think of. The Armenians, uh, they're rebuilding churches there. Uh, they're at the forefront of that. And then the Kurds in Iraq have created a really, a real secular, uh, you know, democratic state in the making. So there's no question that the Kurds, uh, when you look at them, they should be the best friend of the West because they represent a lot of the, the approach that the West is, is pushing for the Middle East. Right. Um do I detect any doubt in your voice? I mean, they sound extraordinary to me. In, in, in such a deadly region, they sound like an oasis of hope. But, but, but again, I mean, we, we have got this wrong in the past. Sh should we be confident? I think we can be as confident as we can be in an area where, um, you know, politics shift constantly and there's always new threats. Uh, when you look at the Kurds of Iraq, they have uh, really worked hard to develop uh, an economy to be open to Western businesses, uh, to run a secular state. Uh, the, like I said before, the Kurds in Syria have put themselves on the line to fight against ISIS uh, since, since last year, before anybody was really talking about the threat. So the Kurds of Turkey, likewise, have really uh, promoted, you know, they've promoted women in government, yeah. they've promoted gay rights, they've, they've really shown themselves to be, to, to be open to what we would consider to be um, democratic, secular values. And mm. I think that they're an important ally. Mm. Are they getting support from the US, the UK, Israel in any way? Are, are Western powers supporting them physically with military or financially? 
Not really, no. I think the, uh, the perfect example right now is that the U.S. has really sort of always put its relations with the Kurds in Iraq uh, second. Mm -hmm. They've really pushed that Iraq should remain um, a United State and that Maliki, whatever the, the prime minister of Iraq, Maliki, has wanted, right. they, they've pretty much supported. Okay. The Kurds right. of Iraq have always said, you know what, we're not being okay. treated fairly by Baghdad. Liza, sorry to interrupt you, we're out of time, but we'd love to have you back on the show. It's a fascinating subject. Thank you very much indeed.